Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me today, Tom Equals, uh, the CEO of Hemispheric Biopharma. And this has been not you're doing fascinating work in the biomedical field, but have a fascinating corporate story as well. But we'll get to that in a second. Well, so, thank Tom, you, uh, let's start with first, just tell me about the company. Give me an overview of Hemispheric. Hemispheric is a publicly traded New York Stock Exchange company. It's a small pharmaceutical company focused on research, development, and the implementation of immune-centered drugs, host-based immunological agents that are very vital uh, for purposes of uh, some diseases that have large populations of patients with unmet medical needs. Okay, now you've been CEO for six months and already you have made some progress. Tell me about that. Our stock has appreciated during the period from uh, uh, January through the present by approximately 100% on wow. a sustained basis. Mm -hmm. um, that appreciation I think is in large part due to a number of measures that we've implemented. We started focusing on action-oriented goals. We narrowed our focus and we're implementing those things that are easiest to accomplish first. And we've accomplished uh, some of those goals in, in the past several months and I think that the market has responded well to that. Now, so let's back up a little bit and tell me what happened at Hemispheric? Um, it was a tumultuous time, a rocky ride there for a while. Can you explain what went on and then how you're on a new path? I, I didn't look so much to what the problem was, but what the solutions were and, and focus, because this, this had to be done quickly and I wanted to assert strong and clear leadership. So I focused on solutions and, and programs that would restore faith in the company uh, and allow us to start accomplishing our important goals. Sure. And our goals are very important, not just from an investment standpoint, but for the patient populations that we're trying to serve. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have got some drugs in the pipeline. There, you've done a lot of work in chronic fatigue syndrome. We have. Tell me about that. Well, chronic fatigue syndrome is a, a disease and it's a very serious, debilitating disease. Uh, however, for many years, uh, it was not clear uh, in the medical community the nature of the disease, the causes of the disease. There is no clear diagnostic other than a symptom-based diagnostic for the disease. And um, we have a drug, Amplogen, an experimental drug, that we're seeking to get approval both here in the United States and uh, internationally that we believe will help people to recover from the debilitating effects of chronic fatigue syndrome. So that's the purpose of Amplogen. And interestingly, uh, our first work with chronic fatigue syndrome was at the request of the FDA many years ago. Nobody could figure out what it was and they asked us to provide treatment. There were some very good results in those initial uh, uh, clinical activities which, which led to our commitment to uh, this disease. Many people don't understand that uh, this is not just about somebody being tired. If I may give an example of just one of the patients that, uh, and he testified uh, in Washington at the advisory committee meeting recently, um, uh, but uh, he was an emergency room physician, um, uh, hard worker, everybody knows how hard you have to work to get through medical school, you know, uh, ER doctors work hard. He went with his son on a hike in uh, the, the northern Wisconsin area, uh, came back, felt like he had caught the flu. Within a matter of months, he was completely bedridden, unable to work. And it wasn't until he was able to get into one of the FDA-approved open-label clinical programs out at Lake Tahoe um, and, and have access to Amplogen that he was able to begin to restore his, his life. Now, now, when you see somebody that is operating at that high of a level, you know, reduced to being in bed 24-7, barely able to even get to the bathroom and take a shower uh, without assistance, you know that if you can help, it's a duty. Yeah, it's a very misunderstood disease. It is, I mean, it is. It really is, even in the medical community. Now, also you have some recent news. Our first order and shipment for our international program in Europe of Amplogen was made. We're part of an early access program 
there, which uh, we, we have great hopes for. And, and so we're happy to kick that off. And also, uh, we, we just uh, penned an agreement with Avrio uh, Pharmaceuticals, a manu contract manufacturer in California, to serve as an additional manufacturer for Amplogen. And we need to replenish our Amplogen inventories for both clinical programs and the early access program while we're waiting for approvals. So th that is uh, uh, important to us because they've given us sort of an accelerated place at the table so we don't have to wait so long to replenish the, the inventories. And the reason we have to replenish them is that people that are participating in these programs need them. And also your manufacturing facility in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Well, well, so what's the latest on that? Some yeah. developments, improvements, what's going on there? <laughs> well, we've done a lot of work in uh, New Brunswick. Uh, this is uh, where we manufacture the polymers that are uh, the basis for the Amplogen drug, but we also have established a, a brand new uh, manufacturing facility which uh, has, uses bioreactors to tremendously increase the efficiency and lower the cost of our FDA approved drug, Alfron, which is approved for refractory HPV uses uh, in the United States. It's approved for all refractory uses uh, in Argentina. These are people who are unable to uh, respond effectively to the synthetic alpha interferon drugs which you see in, in a number of different um, uh, drug cocktails and, and treatments. Uh, alpha interferon is one of the body's primary mechanisms for fighting viruses. So um, those, there, there's a certain percentage of people who are refractory because of an antibody response to the synthetic alpha interferon, which makes it ineffective. It's called, it's called a neutralizing antibody. Alpharon is a natural human interferon. So it's, it's identical to the interferon your body produces and my body produces, so it doesn't have that response, which leaves you know, it available to serve that market, that refractory market, which is a large market. It certainly exceeds our production capacity once we're able to finish the approval process. Okay, so what are your short-term short -term goals for Hemispherics and long-term goals for the company? Our, our short-term goals are very straightforward. You know, um, when I took over, uh, I recognized that we needed to raise capital. And, and I wanted to focus on raising capital in a non-dilutive, uh, highly effective way. Now, uh, that, uh, when, I, when I looked at what we have, uh, it, you know, it was obvious to me, is we have certain technologies that are very late-term. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the experimental drug Amplogen and the approved drug Alpharon. So if we can find co-development or licensing, par licensing partners you know, that would join with us in bringing those drugs to the market, then, then uh, it's a win-win situation because they get a late-term uh, drug candidate with a great potential, big potential market, and we're able to um, uh, get across the goal line because we have the resources and hopefully the partners bringing the exper additional expertise to make that happen. So we're focusing on that. Also, one of the things I've done is I've identified uh, what I consider underutilized or uh, you know, unnecessary assets. For example, we have an extra building that we don't use and, and I'm selling that you know, just to bring capital in to use for for our core technology development purposes. Okay, all right, thank you so much, Tom Nichols, for sharing the welcome. story of Hemispherics Biopharma. Thank you for having Sounds me Sounds like here. you're doing some fascinating work, well, and good luck to you. I'm very proud of our team, and we're gonna do our very best to help the people that need these products. Okay, thank you, and thank you as well for joining us on Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange, and for more information on uh, some fascinating small cap companies, you can go to smallcapnation.com.